There are also probably other phenomena on the, you, you wrote about uh, other aspects of the, of the story. Is uh, during the Cold War, the, the fact that uh, well, science were uh, were not designed not designed anymore to 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 increase knowledge, but to solve problems. And uh, there is something like that probably here is uh, well to get money, to get funding, you have to create, to, you have to say that there is a problem somewhere. Yeah, science, well, so I think in this case you didn't have to. Sure, but you have to No, no, <laughs> to, to convince I mean, what happened that. here, no. You have a problem, and, and Dwight Eisenhower, president of the US and uh, allied commander during the war, <laughs> pointed it out already in the 50s, that there was a danger with science being dependent on the government. And the danger, you know, it's great if the government supports science, as long as the government has no interest in the outcome, one way or the other, just wants to know, and it's fine. But should the government ever have a, a position on the science, it's a very bad system. And that's the case here. The government already decided it wanted climate. The environmental movement, political movements wanted it. And it goes back to the 60s? or Already, already in the 60s it was understood climate was a useful handle on it. But, you know, all through, I remember the 80s and late 70s, there were meetings being held by international groups, you know, about uh, basically how can we push climate as an issue. I saw somebody say it began in 88. That's silly. Of course it didn't. I mean, I, I remember, you know, the EPA in the U.S. was already encouraging people to find out how to use climate as an issue in the 70s. And in fact, the EPA supported Jim Hansen. Uh, already you had uh, the environmental movement, uh, things like uh, Environmental Defense Fund, National Natural Resources Defense Council, all these very well-funded environmental groups were serving the EPA as reviewers of their programs and pushing this. So you had all this build-up, and even for Jim Hansen, who is now supported by the EPA for this, uh, you waited until summer, and you tried to shut off the air conditioning in Congress and so on, so that there would be the impression of heat. When Newsweek had the cover, it was the earth in flames. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, again, there's something absurd about this issue. Uh, you're talking, you know, look at the UN and so on. What are they saying is the tipping point? One and a half degrees centigrade. And we've got 1.1 already. So they're saying in another 0.4 centigrade, the world comes to an end. Huh? And that's that temperature tomorrow. difference is between the time you get up and the time you have lunch is much bigger than that. <laughs> That's going to do it? Who could be so crazy? Well, I'll tell you who would be so crazy. Yes, that's, a, that's the next question, of course. How can it be that so yeah. many clever people uh, are Chris, involved in this? People do not look at numbers. You tell them the next tenth of a degree. Tenth of a degree? Fine. I don't think people think quantitatively. When you look at the financial pages of a newspaper, you know, if the market went up 100 points or 10 points, the graph looks the same, it just goes up. I think this prepares people to ask just, did it go up or did it go down? And so you show them it went up a half degree, they say, wow, look, it went up. Um, but I don't know what you do about that. We can also separate different kind of people. Of course, there are a well, general population 
which is not uh, no, the general in population is sensible. In, is, in general in population understands. Yes, uh, that's the point. Yeah, uh, how it's the educated who don't understand. So they've maybe been, we, we, we they've been educated this. not to understand. Uh, so maybe we could talk about uh, uh, believers or on non-believers. To 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 be short, believers. I mean, uh, be those who believe that uh, climate is disturbed. We, we live in a climate crisis, uh, and people who do not believe. Oh, no, no, I think, at least in America, and I suspect here, ordinary people are very skeptical about this. There is something called common sense. The people who believe this are in several categories. If you're talking about young people, they've been propagandized in school for now almost two generations. So they've been taught this before they even know how to add single-digit numbers. Okay, for them, uh, depends. You know, I, I'm not pessimistic. I don't think even children are automatons. So the children know they have to say this, but their parents maybe tell them no. Except, you know, as you go to two generations, their parents went through this, so it's a little bit problematic. But I think ordinary people understand. I mean, even here with the yellow vests, uh, they understood that the price of gasoline was more important than climate change. Sure. So yeah. you have that. But I think for educated people, there, there is a problem with education. And it is that, you know, kids at the university realize the, the important thing is they have to please their professor. The professor may be crazy, but it doesn't matter. So what is the skill they learn? The skill is how to rationalize anything. If the professor said this, how can I justify it? Ordinary people have a more concrete sense of the world. They don't have to rationalize things. But educated people often learn to rationalize. And many of the professions are like this. I mean, you know, you're a lawyer. You have to argue each side of the case. I mean, you're, there's something in that that makes people vulnerable to very bizarre narratives. And the issue of climate as a catastrophic existential threat is clearly fantasy. I mean, from beginning to end, it's absurd. And yet you have politicians uh, acting, you know, I don't know what motivates them, but I suspect for many of them, they say, my gosh, an opportunity to go down in history as the person who saved the earth <laughs> I mean, must have some appeal. Uh, what do you say? A little bit pessimistic for teachers. Uh, I'm a teacher. Yeah. Uh, you also uh, are a teacher. And is it uh, what you say is in some way that whenever we teach, we uh, we don't uh, we don't do a good job because well, it depends on what you're teaching. If you're teaching engineering, if you're teaching mathematics, if you're teaching physics, if you're teaching fluid mechanics, you are teaching something that is intrinsically objective. If you're teaching uh, history, if you're teaching social science, sociology, political science, you're venturing into opinion and teaching, separating teaching from indoctrination gets a little bit tricky. We all know there are excellent teachers, but they have to make clear that they are giving their views, explaining why they think that way, and leave an opening for questions. This was uh, in, indeed well. Uh, Max Weber wrote about this uh, a century ago of course, already. Of course, but uh, in, he had in mind uh, teaching uh, for all, 
uh, human sciences, uh, history, geography, etc. Indeed, but now uh, what we see is that it, it's coming to science, to real science. Oh yeah. And well, look, America is now in a very strange position. You know, I'm in the Department of Earth, Atmospheric, and Planetary Sciences. Our students have to sit in a set of lectures on racism in the earth sciences. So there is racism in, uh, in earth science. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, it's new. I have, uh, you know, friends in mathematics. They're going crazy, uh, you know. All of a sudden, mathematics is racist. Precision is racism. Being on time is racist. I have never seen so much racism in America as these propositions. I mean, uh, you know, my family is mixed racial. For blacks to be told they can't keep time, they can't be on time, they can't do arithmetic and so on, who ever heard of that? And yet uh, we're having that as forced down people's throats in the U.S as allegedly on behalf of black people. So uh, it's, it's quite strange seen from France uh, to, to, to imagine that in America, which is the, the, the center of the world as regards science. And, uh, oh, yeah. And, uh, how can, well, where, what's, look, what's going look, on there? France, what? France had a revolution, you know, in 1780-something. <laughs> Yes, in which you upset, change the calendar, change this, change that. Yes. That happens every so often. I think America's going through one of those stages. The question is, will it come out of it? <laughs>